it became quite obvious who fit us, who fit with our coach, who fit with our ownership, and because he's from Union City, who fits with just this community. And we are so excited that we feel like we've gotten one of the best who's going to come in and help us go to a different level in terms of adding talent, getting us on plan, and giving our coaches the best roster to win with every single Sunday. I'm going to bring him out right now. Ladies and gentlemen, our general manager, John Robinson. Sir? Good. Good to be home. Thank you, guys. How are we doing, Titan family? How many from Union City did you plant in the crowd today? Uh, 18. I think they're back in that <laughs> corner over there. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah. It's good to be home. It really is good to be home. What has the... Can you describe what the first month has been like? Bit of a whirlwind. Um, you know, really the first thing that, that I had to do was get on the same page with, with Coach Malarkey, learn the players on this team. That was one of the advantages uh, that I thought Mike brought to us was the fact that he knew the players on this team. Um, so it was, it was he and I sitting down and, and talking through the value and the role and how those players are going to fit what we're going to be about. Uh, then it was getting to meet his uh, assistants, their coaching styles, the types of players that they're looking for. Um, then we had some meetings with our pro staff and, tried to, and started to set up the game plan uh, for free agency. And then our college scouts were in last weekend. You know, we've got a pretty important pick coming up here in a few months. Uh, so we're starting to get the, get the process rolling on that and map out the game plan um, for that as well. Hearing about various organizations and their philosophy on how you build a football team, where you start, what the building blocks are, the things that have to happen. Different people have different philosophies. If you would explain to the Titans fans, what's your overall philosophy about how you build a football team? What are the building blocks you must have? I think, I think fundamentally what we're looking for in players is selfless. Not to be confused with selfish. Selfless players. The most important thing, thank you, the most important thing is the team. It doesn't matter how many catches this guy makes, how many tackles this guy gets. It's about how many wins we have tallied up in the column at the end of the season. So it, it's, it's about finding guys that, that buy into that philosophy, that philosophy. The greater good of the team is the most important thing. It's setting aside some of your own personal goals so that the team can get a win. That's the mindset of the type of player that we're looking for. I mean, all 32 teams, they're looking for big, fast, strong, tough. You know, th those are those are adjectives or, or attributes that we're looking for in players. But I think it's the mindset of the player that, that we're really trying to hone in and find guys that are going to fit the type of program we're going to be. So it's not necessarily position, although obviously some positions are more important than no others. No question. But it's, a, it's about finding the type of people first. No question. You know, the, the mindset has to be right. Obviously, the, the on-field ability, that, that's the most important thing. But that, their ability coupled with the mindset, that's what's going to take us from where we're at to where we, where we want to be. It seems as if you already have some of those guys on the Titans roster. No question. You know, it was, and we had two, two guys in, in the Pro Bowl, and Jarrell Casey and Delaney Walker, you know. Yeah. I mean, you talk about... You, you, talk about, you talk about two selfless guys. It was, it was a quick, funny story. So I was at the gas station by St. Thomas, and I, and I noticed Jarrell Casey was in front of me filling up his, his truck. And I knew who he was, and I saw him kind of looking at me. I didn't say anything to him, and I noticed he pulled around and came all the way back around, parked his truck, got out, and came up to me and said, Mr. Robbins, I just want to shake your hand. And uh, he said, welcome to the Titans. Like, that's the type of attitude we got to have. I didn't need him to acknowledge me, but the fact that he recognized and he wanted me to welcome, welcome me to the family, that's important. Um, Marcus Mariota, I mean, what a I mean, great player. We spent a ton of time with him last year in Tampa. It was a tough decision. I think we'll talk a little bit about that, you know, a little later on. 
Um, getting Jason McCourty back out on the field, getting him healthy so he can, he can get back to the level that he needs, that, you know, where he's capable of being. You know, our front seven defensively was a pretty strong unit with, you know, with Morgan and Rackpo and Jones and, and Avery Williams. A lot of those guys, you know, they played really well. And we've got some pieces on the offensive line that, that are good football players. Taylor Lewan's a good football player. We just need him to be more consistent. We've got, you know, we've got some playmakers at receiver. You know, those just got, they got to be more consistent. So that's what we're talking about is that consistency on a day-to-day -day basis so that those guys can maximize their ability and, and show it on Sundays. Explain, if you would, why you and, and most other general managers in the league feel like you have to build through the draft. We hear it a lot, sure. but it's not often explained why that's so important. Well, so I'll kind of pull the curtains back on that a little bit. And the, the, so the, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll answer it in two parts. Okay. Uh, the first part is, is really the financial impact that young players have on a team. Obviously, as players get through their first contract, once they hit free agency, which is right around the corner, those guys are going to be more expensive players. So from a cash flow standpoint, from a cap standpoint, hitting on those young players, to be quite honest, they're less expensive and they're healthier. Um, they have a little less wear and tear on their bodies. So that's kind of the first component of building through the draft. The second component I liken it to a recruiting class. You know, the University of Tennessee, Vandy, all these colleges across the country, they just finished up recruiting. And they signed 20 to 25 guys. And those 20 to 25 guys, they're going to come in as a brotherhood. And they're going to bond with each other, and they're going to lean on each other. we got to do that with our eight draft picks and our rookie free agents. They're going to come in as a draft class. And we need those guys to bond with each other. And then when we do it again next year, we've got another group of guys who are bonded together. Before you know it, we've got 53 guys on the active roster. We've got 10 guys on the practice squad that are locked arm in arm, and they're not going to be broken. So that's really the build through the draft component. It's the brotherhood component, and then it's really the financial impact with acquiring younger players who can bring an impact at a, to be quite frankly, a, a less expensive price. Okay, let's pull back the curtain on free agency then. Let's do this. We know the Titans are in good shape cap-wise. Sure. We, we get that. Why not just go spend like the Yankees and the Red Sox and just go get a whole bunch of players, spend all that money? You got it. Why not? I mean, that's what everybody thinks. Why not just go ahead and spend it? Why, why do NFL teams not often do that? Why wouldn't that be the best thing for the Titans to do right now? Well, again, it's, 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 it's kind of checkers versus chess. Like, we're trying to play a little bit of a chess game and, and position ourselves not only for this year, but next year and the following year. You know, I was a part of, of the Patriots, and we were, we were able to do that on a year after year after year basis and make strategic moves in free agency and add guys to the team that fit a certain role. And, and if we have the chance to acquire an impact player, trust me, we're going to be aggressive and go after that guy. We want guys that are going to come in, and I think it's the mindset. We, we, we want to get the mindset right of, of, of the team-first attitude guys. We don't, look, we don't want guys that are just looking for a check. Uh, we want guys that want to buy into Titan football. We want guys that are going to buy into Coach Malarkey and, and, and my philosophy of what this team's supposed to be about. And, and I'll follow that up with, with you're going to hear me talk about value a lot. You're going to, you know, how, how many have ever shopped at Kmart? I, and I don't know if they still have it, but they used to have the blue light, blue light spe special at Kmart. So if we could, we're not looking for, for, for the blue light special. We're not looking for bargain basement shopping. When I, when I refer to value, I talk about, I mean in terms of does the financial commitment that we're going to make to a player, does that match the role and the impact that that player is going to have on our team? So I hope that makes sense for everyone. So it's the, and, and I'll say the same thing about the draft. The draft picks, obviously the first over pick, that's a high, high commodity. So we've got to make sure we're going to be concrete in our answer that the value of that first overall pick and the type of impact that the player that we're going to select there, that that value matches. When you get off, you can create some issues. In the, there's just a lot of factors that when the value is off, it can kind of throw your team into a little bit of a tizzy. Exactly. You know, sometimes the, you know, it, those first week, we call it kind of in weeks. We got, you know, tiers of free agency. There's the, there's the big name guys that are going to command huge dollars. They're going to have contracts in place. You know, when free agency starts at midnight, they'll have them by 7 a.m. the next morning. You know, there's, you know, 
there's some of those guys that, that we'll talk to and we'll kind of see if they're if the value matches what they're asking for but then there's there's another wave of free agency that are good football players that you know they're maybe a little bit more economically feasible for us as a team uh, in the end I've said this before and I'm, I'm I'm going to say it a minute. It's about what's best for the football team. Again, it's a team game, and that's what we're going to do. You've already made a tough decision. You've been on the job just a few weeks. Longest tenured Titan, Michael Griffin, safety, 900 career tackles, 25 career picks. You decided to let him go. It was not because you needed salary cap room. You have that. You just made a decision to make a change. Take us through the decision to do that, if you would, please. Yeah, so, you know... I, I have a ton of respect for Michael. Uh, didn't know him personally. Um, met him a couple times the first month I was here on the job. Um, but, but Coach Malarkey and I spent a lot of time talking about that decision. You know, and in the end, it was a decision that was made, you know, not only for our football team, but the timing of it was really out of respect for Michael and his family. You know, he's, he's played this game a long time. He's been a staple in this, in this community. Um, he's been good in the locker room for us, and, and you know teams are going to start to fill their rosters up over the next month and two months. So, for him to continue his playing career or have a chance to continue his playing career, we felt it best to move forward now, uh, sooner rather than later, so that 31 other teams can evaluate Michael and see if he fits what what they do defensively. Um, that's pure out of respect for Michael. Um, it was a team decision that that we made was best for our team. But also, we wanted to give Michael out of respect for what he's done for this, for this organization, a chance to catch on and keep playing. Let's talk draft. Absolutely. This class overall, the Titans have eight picks. Certainly the first pick overall is the one everybody's talking about. But you also have a pick in every round and two picks overall in the sixth round. The strengths of this draft as you begin to analyze it with the scouts they were in last week, you're headed to the combine next week. What are the overall strengths of this draft class? I, you know, I think overall, I really like the, I really like the depth of the class. Um, there's players that we're going to be able to, to get in every round um, that I think are certainly going to be contributors to this football team. Uh, I think probably the one that stands out the most, which is you know, kind of a building block piece for me fundamentally, is the lines. You know, it's the offensive line, it's the defensive line. You know, it, I referenced this the other day in an interview. If, if you look at the Super Bowl, and really the outcome of that game was decided by the line. Denver's, they beat Carolina's line and, and got to Cam. Denver's line was able to hold off Carolina's rush. Peyton stayed upright, which you've heard me reference that several times. He was able to get the ball out, and Denver wins the Super Bowl. So. I think those, those kind of work hand in hand. So the offensive and defensive lines are, are strong areas uh, in this draft. Um, there's a good core group of defensive backs uh, that can be impact players in this draft. Um, there's, a, there's varying degrees of receivers. You know, the, the most important thing to me for the receiver is, A, can he get open? And B, can he catch the football? Hmm. If he can't do that, then like, what are we talking about? We've got some guys that we believe can get open and catch the football. Um, and then I think there's a pocket of quarterbacks that's going to kind of help us, maybe into a question you're going to ask, that depending upon, uh, depending upon how they finish out, you know, kind of the last part of the process here, that could impact where we're at, you know, with the first overall pick. Last year in Tampa, you have the first overall pick. You draft Jameis Winston and build around him. How much does that overall experience, having the number one pick, and then building around a young quarterback help you as you're the Titans general manager this year? Sure, you know, what, we, were, we were very exhaustive in our evaluation of, of both Jameis and Marcus last year. Um, we were kind of going down that road given our situation in Tampa. You know, in, in my opinion, the most important position on any football team is a quarterback, and, and that was a decision that we were prepared to make. So I think just really being exhausted, spending as much time as you can with that player and making sure that he's going to be a good teammate, that he's going to fit what we're going to ask of the player, that he's going to be dependable and accountable. And then most importantly, when he gets on the field, is he going to have an impact on the game? And we felt that both Jameis and Marcus would have an impact on the game when they step foot on the field. 
That's the same approach that we're going to take this year. That player that we select, we want to make sure that he's going to fit all, check all the boxes that we're talking about, but most importantly, he's going to make an impact on the field. Everybody thinks nationally that you desperately want to trade the number one pick. That's what the word is. Any show that you hear, and, and it makes a lot of sense what, why, why you would. What do you say to the Titans fans about that? Well, Should they expect you to trade the number one pick? I, 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 I think well, you've got to ask, right? I, I, I think over the next couple of months, and, you know, Mike and I have talked about this, the approach that we're taking, I'm, I call it a game plan. So when the coaches prepare for the opponent on, on Sundays, they kind of have a game plan. And, you know, Coach LeBeau's defense, it might look like one coverage and then we move and we blitz, or, or it might look like we're going to blitz and then we play this coverage. Um, we might have a, a return going one, this, one way in special teams and Music City Miracle it over to the other side and take it the distance. So I think that's kind of the approach that we're taking. So to be totally transparent with you guys, there's going to be... I'm going to be as vague as I can. <laughs> and there's going to be a lot of smoke screen about he's going offense, he's going defense, he's going to trade it. But you can rest assured, whatever decision we make, A, it's going to be for what's best interest of the team. B, the player is going to check all the boxes that I talked about mindset-wise. And three, he's going to be an impact titan when he steps on the field. And not so many words. Yes, so that's so, many words. <laughs> so, so who will know the truth? How many people will know the truth down the stretch? How, do you just have to keep it in the tightest of tight circles? I would say. You'll tell Amy Adams Strunk. Absolutely. If she asks. Probably, yes. Coach, Coach Malarkey. And okay. Could you be any more excited about this opportunity that you have here? You know, I, when, I was, when I was interviewing for the position, Amy asked, well, well, well why, why here? And I was like, I, I just have a, this is home for me, you know? This is, a, this team means a lot. And I'm, I'm extremely passionate about winning. Um, the last two years in Tampa were very tough, coming from the Patriots. We won a lot of dang football games in New England. And, and it felt good. It's a really good feeling. You guys know what that means, you know, how, how that feeling is when you're, when you're sitting there and the, and the last horn sounds, you got more points than the other team. That's a good feeling. And, and that's, that's where I want to be. That's where we're going to be, you know. I'm going to work my fingers to the bone making sure we get there. Wow. I think uh, you can probably all understand why we're very excited about this guy, our general manager, John Robinson. Nice job, boss. Thanks. Well done.